Ladies and gentlemen, today we will listen to the band Last Exit and the album Iron Path from 1988. 1988, Iron Path, Last Exit. You can find this anywhere. Just go online, you'll find it. Put out by Virgin Records, believe it or not, folks. I do. Virgin was super hip. Yeah. At times. At times they were. Well, you got to make some money sometimes. Do you want to <laughs> give the folks some uh, some context on the, on the record we're about to listen to? This is a quartet featuring the great Peter Bratzman on saxophone, the legend Sonny Chirac on guitar, Ronald Shannon Jackson on drums, and Bill Laswell on bass. This is an interesting pairing of folks and uh, an even more interesting record. So let's jump on it. Let them know. Welcome if you got them. Let's go. Yo, we're back. We're listening to 1988 Last Exit Iron Path. Yes, we are. One what, record. What do you think? This is the one studio album. I've heard this album plenty of times before. And, oh, um, I didn't know that. I've, I've heard this album, album on cassette originally uh, believe it or not see, see this is proof we don't talk about these things folks um yeah we don't we don't talk about these things at all uh i i loved um i when i first got this tape given to me um it was given to me by this great guitar player back home in, in puerto rico and uh and he was like you know you might get into this because i was in that so what year I was, was it? right at that edge this is uh i got this in 92 maybe 92 92? No, not 92. No, 96. I'm terrible with years. Whenever whenever the tape came out, the tape had already been played a while. So but, like you're yeah. saying like you're 14? Yeah. Well, it was around that age, yeah. Okay. Because awesome. I left the country 20 years ago, so it was like, yeah, mid-90s, I got this record. Early to mid-90s, I got the CD, the cassette, sorry. Wow. And, uh, and ran, yeah, I got this, and I got a David Torn cassette. He gave me a couple of, of cassettes that really changed a lot of shit for me. I guess but, so, wow. This yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, this is a great album. For, uh, you know, music-wise, if, if none of these names sound familiar to you, you've never heard anything like this, you should own this. This is a very damn cool rock album. That's what I call it. This is a rock album. So I, and, much different story. I first heard Last Exit maybe five years ago. Interesting. Right? I, and I've heard the other people in the band, other things. Yeah. For sure. At, at length. But yeah, I just never had heard a Last Exit album. I'd heard the name. I'd seen it, blah, 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 but never the music, never checked it out. Mm. And I have uh, an original copy of Last Exit, the cassette recordings. Nice. Right? And and so now here's the funny thing. So I, I love that album. That one blew me away. And I never had listened to this one, right? In comparison to the cassette recordings, this one let me down. Agreed. No, of course. That's why, that's why I, I, I set it off with, if you've never heard any of these people, this is a great record to own. Otherwise, eh. You know. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say, I wouldn't go that far, but it was a little bit of a letdown. Compared to, well, the, compared to the live album I have. Because you can't, I was going to say, because you can't put it next to, because you can't put it next to a live performance. This sort of music works really well in front yes. of people. Oh, Yes. You know the the band is the band is much more aware of what's happening. Uh, in in because see there there are there are songs here, but in reality it's just one thirty six minute track. Okay, so getting that, back getting back to you, what did you think about it when you first heard it? When I first heard it, was I it too heard weird? nothing like this. No, it was not this because see, I was craving that stuff. Okay, I was already at that. At that Were you a Crimson fan already? already? Uh, not yet, but I was I was a Birthday Massacre fan. Uh, I knew Sonic Youth. Okay. Uh, I knew Swans, right? So I was already at that place. And this was shit that I found through cassette tape trading, right? Because it's not like I had the TV. Or there was no right, music yeah. channel that was doing this stuff. So by the time that this shows up, it's like, it's exactly what I want. I think this is what leads me to, like, only making this sort of weird, uh, out fringy music. Um, and that's the... This is specifically the aesthetic I like in it, you know? It, it no, really covers the ground. And, and I will say, no band does sound like Last Exit. It's a, it, it's a very interesting mix. Well, I think it's interesting that these four guys definitely can play their instruments. Uh, and it shows because 
in free form music, it's really easy to just get noisy for the sake of being noisy. It's different to create movements and pieces Change, that only yeah. happens when you've actually paid attention to the instrument and the music you're creating. So I think that's what makes this so so special, right? Like nothing sounds like this because it's not these four dudes. Any which favorite track off the side one? That, like I said, the, to me, this is one thirty-six minute long track. Uh, the second movement on it, which is like the second track on this, what's the name of it? Uh, Iron Path. There you go. The namesake and the last movement of the of the of the record. Uh, those are the only two things that count as tracks, which we'll get to. But um, yeah, you know, underwhelming playing by uh, Bill Laswell. I'm just happy he's there because you know he's the brains behind this whole thing. Oh, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to a little more of that in the second half, folks. Because that, that yeah, we'll leave yeah. a cliffhanger on that one. Uh, yeah. Let's so, folks, smoke another one. Listen to side two, and come back. We'll talk about it. Do smoke it. if you got them. Let's go. <laughs> Let them know. Smoke them if you got them. We're back. We're back. We're last, last exit. Last exit. Iron Path, brother. Yeah. Can't believe you had this back in the day. That's so cool. I had, yeah, I had this a long time ago. Uh, I was trying to put together where this cassette may be, but it's I've moved too many times. <laughs> um, some some woman threw rock. it out years ago. Some 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 woman threw it out. Some harlot. It ended up in the in some fire at some point, just because we couldn't talk about shit. Anyway, that's not the point. Last exit. <laughs> yes. Um, a good record. Uh, We're, a solid record. Yes. If this is not the world that you're in, right? Like you should own this and have it because it's a cool thing to check out. This is a good intro, I'd say. To them. Agreed. Right. Yeah. Like like like, like because it's not as crazy as their live ones. The live ones are the gold standard for this. And if you ever heard the live ones, which Jeremiah was talking to us about before, it's really hard to like Go consider back. this as good as those. The energy's yeah. not the same. That's the big difference. Live, it's like it's on ten. <laughs> you can tell they're playing extremely loud. It's awesome. Now this album, it's more atmospheric than the live one, right? The live one is hitting you over the head the entire time. Right. This one's a dark and pensive at times, I would describe it. Definitely. This has uh, shades of swans and coil and nun. It's a, the ambient idea, which almost at times becomes a drone, a sustained C-sharp drone that people kind of work around, you know? Now, you said something before we skipped about Bill Laswell. And I want, I'll say it again. And I want uh, Bill, <laughs> Bill Laswell's under his playing is extremely underwhelming, and none of this would have happened without Bill. So I'm happy he's there, but he should have gotten a different bass player. So Bill Laswell, very controversial in my mind, player because he's always the worst guy in the band. Yeah, but the smartest guy in the group, right? He, he now that what's funny is this is a microcosm of basically bands in general. Okay, on to think about any band you've basically been in, right? Usually the guy that is the least talented actual player in the band, that's the guy that's going to go get the gig. Yeah, the most drive and the, the most side drive. That's the guy who's going to go talk to the guy. That's yeah. everything about it, right? And the guy who's the best player, he's never going to do that. He's not leaving the house. Of course not. And if he does, it's a mistake. Yeah, it just happened. It just, yeah. <laughs> it, literally, the work just fell there. So yep. that's every band ever. Uh, and now on this level, it's Bill Laswell. But every time it's Bill Laswell. Like, what other bands have Bill Laswell played in that you're like, oh, he's the worst? Didn't he play with Buckethead too? Listen, he made a series of recordings with Sly and Robbie. Oh, don't. Oh, wow. That are, that, you know, it's Come hard on, Dave. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm saying. If it would have happened at the Dome, it would have been fucking five stars. Listen. Bill Lazo is controversial for many reasons. He's got an incredible uh, studio. Uh, one of the things... Good producer, really, I guess, right? Like, that's that's more... A I've, good enough producer to keep having a consistent gig for 30 years with music that exists in the Bill Laswell cosm, right? But I'll just say... You want somebody else on the bass on this album. That's what you're telling That me. it would have been a good idea to put anything else other than <laughs> the, what he did uh, because... 
Yeah, I mean, and imagine if they had Jelma Dean Takuma, dude, playing anybody with, with, with else. Ralph Shannon again. Anybody else? Uh, we should point out though that Sonny Shirak's uh, last album. Wow, uh, really? Did this one come he, out? This one, I thought Ask the Ages came out after this. This was the last studio recording. Uh, well, you know, this is what's written. So yeah, the, I don't believe that. I believe so, that person's fake news. Yeah. Well, there you go. That happens. I think Ask but, the Ages came out after. You know the, the album with uh, Pharaoh Sanders and Elvin, right? I think that makes sense. This is '88. I think that came out '91. What do you think? Let's uh, look it let's up. Check let's real look quick. it up. Ask I'll talk, the Ages. I'll talk to the people. I'll talk to the people. Uh, this is the last album released by Sonny Shirai before his death in 1994. Is Ask the Ages. Bam. There you go. So the fake Oracle news for knows. me. The Oracle knows. A hundred points for you as usual. So you know, in, in the in the in a bigger scope of uh, Sonny Shirai, if the this man. is Sonny Shirai's the man. Uh, I wish he had been more liked a little bit clearer, more recorded in his yeah. career total, just in general. I have yeah. uh, I have a Sonny Shirai original with uh, his wife Linda Shirai called Paradise. Mm. Yeah, that's a very cool album. And, how, and how's that? Oh, it's very cool. It is. Imagine. It's 70s, so it's sort of funky. It's almost, like, I wouldn't say disco, but close at times, like the beat. But Sonny Shirak is going full out free jazz on it. When it's solo wow. time. like cause It's like they're doing like, hey, da 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 Anyway, um, you know, any other notes on the on the album? Peter I, I, Brotsman? Yeah. Let's talk about Peter Brotsman, Pro, please. Is he one of your favorite saxophone players, G? Peter Brotsman's an interesting cat because the catalog expands so many different ways. I think Last Exit was a great place for him to be. But I, I wish we could talk about the live recordings uh, because, yeah, the live recordings, how he attacks the live stuff, he's just basically taking hands off. You've seen Peter Rotsman live, correct? Yes. How do you describe his tone live? He had bad intentions. Paint peeling. Yeah, he had bad intentions. Uh, you know, the instruments, uh, there's, there's, been a, there's a couple of players that are so aggressive in their playing uh, when it happens. You know, Sam Rivers was another. Yeah. When he wanted to go for it, he was going to take, take the skin off your head. But, well, yeah, Chirac is... Whew. The last question I have for you is... Um, Ronald Shannon Jackson on drums. Yeah. Where do you stand on him? Like, because he's very controversial among jazz purists. Like, I don't even know that. I think they just hate him. Period. Right? Like, I think it's unnecessary hate because here's the deal. When I when I got this tape originally, I heard it. I didn't know anybody that was in the band. Beautiful. So my concept of the music is just the music. So for me, that felt and sounded right when i don't hear that stuff and even in my own playing there are moments that i like that idea of the you know the the shoes and the bucket uh it, it's refreshing it's different so to me it's just a bunch of hate like i said i i if i didn't know who the hell was playing and i enjoyed it that's it i enjoyed it yeah i think mine was blurred at first because i heard bad press and blah 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 when it's first... hard going into it that way right Right. And then over the years, I think I just listened to something maybe even this year recently that had it been it. And I loved it. I loved it. Oh, it was a James Bud Almer album I listened to recently. Then yeah. the, within the past month, it was a James Bud Almer album. And he's on it. And I was just digging it so much. And I was like, he's got Man, great, the drums are he's killing got great it. live clips with Almer uh, so on YouTube. But you what need to check what out happened was I weird. was not hip enough. Yeah. Right, like, and that's yeah. the thing, folks. I always tell you, if you get into any music, it's amazing how much more your ears will grow if you let them. Yeah, right. If you let them, like my journey with jazz, my guitar teacher gave me Charlie Parker records when I was sixteen years old, a box set, and said, "Hey, go home, and listen to it." I listened to it; it made no sense to me at all. I hated it; did not like it; <laughs> didn't understand it. I was like, "This is not does sound like just give, this, this is not sound like Randy Rhodes' Crazy right. Train." What is going on? So, and then years later, I mean, 10 years later, I love it, that type of music, right? 
And then, yeah. so I loved that type of jazz. And then probably at, at that period, I didn't like the weirder jazz. And now 10 years later, I dig that more. So, so it's, it's about, it's about the evolution. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. So smoke, we got them. Listen, get the ears on. We, we, we made it. I lied to you. I was supposed to go to Canada. We didn't go to Canada because this, this album just came up. I'd never heard it. I'd listened to the other last exit album. So, Oh, that's wonderful. That's why we, I'm, we I'm okay there. with all that. Everybody wins. So tomorrow we go to Canada. All right, let's do it. Smoke if you got them.